Mark's book reminds us of Matthew 24, 21, that this gospel of the kingdom sh shall be preached in all the world and then shall the end come. And so every time someone receives Christ, we literally are hastening the return of Christ. And here's a young man today, Mike Hayward, who has been redeemed by Jesus Christ. Now, you know, the second Corinthians five says, if you're in Christ, you're a new creature. God changed you. Tell us about it. Well, Jerry, I always wondered what was in these cups, uh, you know, but now, I, and now I do, I'm not gonna tell you guys though. <laughs> um, you know, I just wanna start by saying a little bit about Teen Challenge. Uh, um, the outreach coordinator now at Teen Challenge uh, London. And uh, basically we, we go out about 300 times a year in, in corroboration with the Women's Center. And so it's been a journey for me. This is a new role for me um, in corroboration with uh, people like Christy James and uh, um, some people from London. I'm just so happy to be on here. But uh, so basically to your question, it has been a journey. It's been a four year journey. Um, and uh, it started actually, I'm not, I'm not unfamiliar to, te to, uh, to 100 Huntley Street. I've been on here before. About three years I was here with the Teen Challenge Choir. Um, and I'm the guy on the solo in the third verse uh, looking like a bobblehead. Um, and uh, so I do have some exposure to here. Also, Norm McLaren, I know you, you may be familiar that, that, that uh, he's, he's come on board with us. And so... Um, it's just been a great experience. Uh, I've been, uh, you know, so um, it's just been wonderful. Tell me about what Christ did in your own life. Well, um, I didn't uh, apply for the outreach coordinator job with my resume. I, I came to Teen Challenge broken. Uh, you know, my life was over. Basically, I, I had thoughts of suicide. I was 140 pounds and I was dealing with an addiction, uh, toxic cotton of, to the tune of about $200 a day. How did you get into Oxy? Because Oxy is such a big drug that so many housewives are on right now. Yeah, and you know what? That's typical. The fact is, is I'm I'm not from the streets. I wasn't, uh, um, you know, I I wasn't raised uh, to, you know, on, on drugs. Drugs weren't around me. Um, but uh, basically, what happened was uh, about eight years into my marriage, I was prescribed OxyContin. Um, and in that time, my life just uh, spiraled. Uh, you know, within two years, I had lost everything. Why, why were you prescribed Oxy? Uh, just I had some uh, dental issues, and here I am at a doctor, uh, doctor's office, and they're prescribing OxyContin for, for those issues. I do want you to give a warning about this because it's a controlled substance. It's a narcotic. Sure. And I want you to speak to people today who, you know, had a broken arm, wrist, whatever, and they were prescribed this substance and the, the arms mended, but they're still uh, predisposed to take these pills. Well, the fact is, is that uh, OxyContin um, is getting better well known now, but um, literally for the longest time, people were getting it prescribed by their doctor, taking one, feeling dizzy off it, saying, I'm not gonna take this stuff, putting it on the shelf and their kids are taking it out of the medicine cabinet and taking it to school. And it's, uh, it's an epidemic, it's been upgraded to a pandemic. If you look at what's going on even in the Northwest Territories now, um, it's unreal, you know, you, so much of the population from young kids to elderly are addicted to OxyContin. So uh, once they pulled it from the shelves and they, they come up with this OxyNeo, now you've got people just withdrawing from these, uh, you know, crazy withdrawals. It's like the flu times 20, um, if you've heard about it, uh, and literally for me, it was, um, I had it, then I didn't have it. It's very expensive. So I would be basically coming off OxyContin constantly. Now in the United States, people that are addicted rotate doctors. In Canada, how does this work that you, when you get an addiction to Oxy, how do you continue to get the supply if you're not buying it on the street? Um, you, you just go up, basically I had a, a list, a string of pharmacies that, um, I would go to this one, that one. They've tried to make some, uh, they've tried to stamp down on that now, but uh, I, you know, I would be like seven or eight different pharmacies um, and, you know, getting prescribed from the doctor, but typically it's being found on the streets more and more. And so how did this impact you and your wife and what you were doing at the time? <clears throat> well, a little bit of my story is, uh, um, you know, we were married in, in 99, me and my wife, and uh, um, 
we gave our hearts to the Lord. Uh, and basically, we met a PK, a preacher's kid. He was kind of a backslidden guy. But, but you know, the one thing he had to say to us is, listen, Mike, uh, you know, Jesus is the only way. And, and you've got to listen to this right now. And, and I was a practicing Buddhist at the time, and my wife was a Hindu. So that went over well. Uh, basically, we were like, and you can leave our house. And, uh, and that was our first exposure to the gospel. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to show him. And I decided I'd read the Bible. Um, you know, I had, I had argued with Christians before. Um, and so basically, uh, it just was not, it was a non sequitur for me. I didn't want anything to do with the Bible. Uh, I was raised in, you mentioned Baptist. Uh, I used to think of, you know, the Baptist church I was raised in. And, and it just, uh, you know, I, I used to say I believe in God. I just don't believe in Jesus Christ. And so... Uh, this guy basically he told us this, and we were like, you know, get out of the, get out of our house kind of thing. But then I started, you know, I I decided to pick up on a couple of uh, nice easy reading things. So I started with the Book of Revelation, <laughs> and the Left Behind series. <laughs> and so you know, you're talking about prophecy. Well, um, you know, looking at eschatology, I went from there to about a year of straight study. Um, and uh, stepping back, though, I went to the church to hear this, this guy's father preach. And uh, he was crying over the gospel, and he was saying, you know, folks, you've got to all read this Bible. You've, you've got you, you've to receive this in your heart. And he was bawling over or Peter being crucified upside down. And it just, it, 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 it so much, uh, um, it was real to him, and it became real to us. And so we went to the altar, and... Uh, I gave our hearts to the Lord, and, and you know, we were down on the crowd, ground just bawling. And this was our first exposure to the gospel. It, it was by no means, uh, um, you know, an incremental thing. We were down on the ground. We were full of the Spirit. Uh, and we went on for about five years after that to uh, run Bible studies, young adults groups. We were just, you know, nobody could leave our house with, without being introduced to the gospel and, and uh, you know, if they did leave our house without it, we'd go to their house, and, and, and that was our thing. So tell me about the bondage being broken of the addiction. Was it the night you came to Christ? No, I, was, I had been a Christian for seven years when I got addicted to Oxycontin. Okay, and uh, so let's talk about sure. deliverance then. Mm -hmm. When did the deliverance come? So what happened was uh, I, I, I um, took the one pill of Oxycontin. It started me down a journey in which in two years I lost everything. You know, this was being in the Lord, and so I had that guilt and that shame and that uh, I just didn't know what to do. You know, the Bible says if, if you walk away, it feels like, it, you know, it's ten, ten times worse. Sure. And, and so um, within two years, I had, you know, I'd, I had lost my, uh, I had been in jail. I had I'd, uh, I'd done anything I could. By, by the end, I, was, uh, I had a mattress to my name. So what was the catalyst of the change? The catalyst of the change was um, uh, I basically, I was left in this room by myself and uh, I cried out to God and I said, Lord, if you can just help me. I, I really believed that there was no help for me. I had known the gospel. Why was I turning away? And, you know, the Lord just spoke to me in that time that he's married to the backslider. And so I called Teen Challenge and they said, you know, it's a, it's um there's an entry fee and, and uh, you know, uh, $1,000, that is for a $40,000 stay. I don't know if most people know that, but, um, and I just said, I don't know, I can't do this. I'm, I'm, and so I was just about to hang up the phone and, and, you know, the intake guy said, you know, just give me a minute. And he was off on the phone and he talked to the, uh, the program coordinator and the program coordinator said, just tell him to come in. So was it progressive or the, the getting off drugs or did it happen? Abruptly. You know what? Um, uh, we have a we have a kind of uh, sanction at Teen Challenge that you need to go to um, uh, detox before you come in. But really, a lot of the time, it doesn't happen, guys. I mean, we can't monitor every behavior. So, like so many, I came in there just had taken the last uh, oxycontin in my system as I walked through the doors. But um, you know what? It wasn't it wasn't a big thing. It was uh, you know 50 guys praising God and and you know, talking about the gospel, and, and um, it just, it was never an issue, you know. Any withdrawal? That's what I mean, there wasn't. And believe me, I know about withdrawal. I, I, uh, 
it, you know, your, your just liquids are pouring from every, you know, source. It's, it's just a horrible flu-like thing. And I come into Teen Challenge and it's just the, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit's there. Well, because there are some people watching right now that they want to get off oxy. They want to get off the substance they're on, but they, they're afraid yep. that if they would not take the pill, that it would just be horrible. And yet they don't realize what they're experiencing is far worse than if they would withdraw. Give sure. these people some hope today. Well, I give you hope in this that, um, you know, there's, there's, there's methadone and all those different things that people are out there. I can stand here and say for three years, over three years, I've not had a drug or an alco alcohol or a cigarette or anything else in my system for over three years. Now, I saw your boy back, Zion, in, in the green room and your wonderful wife. What, what kind of difference has all this made? Well, you know, I, um, I was in the program four months. I received divorce papers December 24th wow. in the program. And I'm walking around outside and, and I'm thinking about my little boy at the window screaming, saying, why are you leaving? And, I, and, and uh, just completely shaken. I'm thinking about this and I'm, I'm really thinking I need to leave this program right now. I need to leave because um, there's no hope for me. And you know what? What, what happened was I, it began to say, I began to see Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And so actually January 4th of 2010, which was almost three years to the date of now, I went to court to deal with masters, matters of custody, support, and my wife was sitting there and, and, you know, it was, that day just showed me that things were over. Um, and so I went back to Teen Challenge and the Lord just showed me, you know, surrender, surrender. And I did. And, and uh, you know what? I had peace. I was like, no matter what happens, you know, in, in Acts 26, it says, what, what was Paul supposed to do? To give them the gospel, to bring them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. And that's where I was. And, and so whatever was going to be added unto me, it was enough. And so, you know, that would have been great to stop there in, in, in my life being redeemed, you know. But, uh, I, you know, my counselor, I'm down having lunch and my counselor says, I got to see you after lunch. And so I said, okay. And uh, I walked in my counselor's office and my wife was sitting there. And she said that she wanted to reconcile our marriage. And um, that was the greatest words I ever could have heard because I thought it was done. And, you know, he's able to bring beauty from the ashes. Um, you know, the next choir outreach, uh, uh, we went to Gateway Church in London. We're going back there um, in two weeks. And, and again, there's all these anniversaries coming up. And one of them is that we went to Gateway London and, and shared our, I shared my testimony there, my, my newly reconciled family. Um, and it was a great time. And so this is three years out now. I've went through internship. I don't know if people know that we have 16 guys that have graduated the program and, and we use the, their skill set, you know, like uh, for the ki kitchen, for instance, sometimes we'll say, um, you know, can you cook? And right. they'll say no and we'll sure. say you're hired. Sure. So those are the kind of things that we Mike, do. Mike, I want your family, your wife and son to come and stand and I, I want it with you. And if I think they're here on the set, come on over, would you? And I want us to just pray right now for those that are addicted, maybe a wife that's left, yeah. a precious little boy that doesn't have the joy in his heart and life like this son of yours has right now. And they're going to come up here and stand. Come on up here real quickly if you would. Well, look who and, it is. And uh, come stand right here. And I want you to look in that camera and, and I want you to see the joy of a family that only God can put together. And I want you to see the smile on the face of that wife because I have lived and seen how drugs and alcohol have destroyed so many people, so many young people, so many marriages, and it's not God's will for something to die that way. So Mike, we're going to take hands and will you join us? Father, we ask for those listening today whose families are crumbling because of drugs, because of an addiction to oxy or whatever, Lord, break that bondage. Yes, Lord. Break that bondage. Heal marriages. Set men and women free and bring families back together as you did with Mike. Thank you, God, for Teen Challenge and its powerful ministry. 
Continue, Lord, to use it to be a transformative element in a society that is deep in addiction. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Crossroads says to each one of you, God be with you. Keep that ministry going. We're so very proud of you.